Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Power of Your Mind podcast. I'm hypnotist Jim Kellner, and I am co-hosting with my good friend, Victoria Gallagher. Now, you probably know her as the Law of Attraction hypnotist. She's also the number one best-selling author of Practical Law of Attraction, Align Yourself with the Manifesting Conditions and Successfully Attract Your Desires. She's also the founder of Hip Talk and HypnoCloud apps, which gives you access to over, what, 500 hypnosis recordings right in the palm of your hand. So be sure to download that app from the App Store. Um, Victoria, I, you know, I always wonder about this one. Here, this 500. How in the world did you create 500 recordings? Oh, yeah. Well, first of all. Years and years, I guess. That that mm. sounds so much better coming out of your mouth than. Really? <laughs> I, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I, I love, I love how you introduced me. And, and when you're talking about the hypno cloud apps, you know, we are, um, just for those of you who are probably listening to this months into the future, you might get a little confused because we are totally changing the name of that app. And so it'll be called something else to be revealed soon, but how I created those, you know, the very first 300 that I created took about a decade. And then I created this amazing system where I had probably about five or six people on my team. And mm -hmm. I was able to create about five or 10 sessions a week. And mm -hmm. so this was back in like 2013, some maybe 2012, um, I created about 200 of those just in that one year. Wow. And yeah, and I, I owe it to the power of focus because like you can do anything if you really focus on it and you create a discipline around it. I mean, I was just literally using Pomodoros and um, some days when I do my Pomodoros, and for those of you who don't know what Pomodoros are, they are this focus technique where you spend 25 minutes completely focused on what you are doing, very specific task that you're working on. Then you take a five minute break and you do four of those and that's a full Pomodoro cycle. Then you take a half an hour break and then um, you do it all over again. And you can do, I mean, in a given day, you can do up to four of those cycles in a day. And it is astonishing how much you can actually get done. But what's even more astonishing is it really shows you how little time we really do spend normally, unless we have this set intention, how little time we really spend focusing. Cause I, myself in an average day, if I'm not doing it that way, that structured way, I will literally, I'll start a project, but I'll have multiple screens open at the same time. Yeah. And I'll check my phone. I'll check Facebook. I'll check YouTube. I'll check the news, whatever it is. And when you're doing that, you're spending very, very little time actually getting any, anything done. So I highly recommend these Pomodoros to it. To me, it's like, it's a manifesting technique in and of itself, because it's really taking advantage of the power of focus and taking that to the whole you know, a whole new level, but yeah, to answer your question, it was, it was really <laughs> creating a system and, and staying focused. You know, um, I use Pomodoro's myself and it really, it changed, it changed my life really, because yeah, that's so easy to, to, you know, you hear your phone ding or something, or, you know, you're like, oh, I should go look at this thing. And, oh, I forgot about this. And, but, you know, anyone can commit to 25 minutes, right? I mean, uh, and the, well, that was the other thing is sometimes when I'm, when I'm procrastinating on something, I can go, okay, I can just do 25 minutes and uh, helped, helped a lot with that. It really, it really does. does. And you don't even have to start when you're first starting out. It's almost like meditation. When you mm. start out yeah. meditating, maybe it might seem a little overwhelming to 
meditate for 25 minutes. So you could always, there's no real hard and fast rule when it comes to that. You don't necessarily have to do four cycles or four, um, Pomodoros in a row to, to you know, to, to and, and a whole two hour block, you could just say, okay, I'm going to block out 30 minutes today. And then you can work yourself up to that. Cause focus to me, it's like a, it's like a month, uh, muscle that you ultimately oh, yeah. have to work up to. You know, I, so one of my goals is if, uh, you know, I, and I tell myself, if you will just do four hours of focused work, that's fine. Yeah. You're done for the day because really four hours of focused work is like, you know, 12 hours of just regular working, you know, really. It really is. When you think about all the little distractions that we, you know, sometimes you're doing multiple, you know, like for, uh, there's this myth that we can actually multitask, that we can right. actually do two things or three things and focus on two or three things at the same time. And it's really a, a myth. And, uh, there's, there's these little exercises that I do with my, um, with my manifesting group. And we do this a little bit of this in the seminar as where, as well, where, it, you really get the proof. You really get to see how there is really no such thing as multitasking. It's really shifting back and forth. And it actually ends up taking you far longer to do something when you're trying to multitask. And you know, sometimes I'll get into the multitasking because my computer's running really slow oh, yeah. or something <laughs> like that. And it's like, okay, well, while this is loading up, I'm going to go ahead and go over here and, and do this. Cause I'm always trying to like make every minute <laughs> productive, right. but, sure. um, you know, that just kind of tells me it's time for a new computer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Time to start manifesting a new computer. <laughs> exactly. I've been, I've been, uh, what's the word complaining about my computer long enough. So I need to, I need to shift that. <laughs> I need to either just get it, get it to respond the way it needs to respond. Cause I keep thinking in the back of my mind, oh, maybe, you know, the computer's not like that old. Maybe there's some way that I can clean it out mm -hmm. and it'll run faster. But, uh, I just need to, I need to focus on figuring that out because it actually does eat up an enormous amount of time every time I come in here. And it almost just makes me just want, not want to do some of the things that I need to do on right, this computer yeah. because it's like, oh, I'm going to have to sit down. I'm going to have to wait for this thing to fire up. And like, that's, that's beneath me right now. I should not be sitting here exactly. waiting for a computer to fire up. <laughs> exactly. You know, the other thing that we mentioned, you know, we always mentioned in the intro is you talk about that you're number one best-selling author of the practical law of attraction. And as a as an author myself, um, I'm, and I'm sure there's other authors out there that listen to this. I'm wondering, did you manifest that becoming a number one bestseller? You know, it's really interesting. We, so first of all, yes, the, the answer is always going to be yes. Did I manifest oh, right. that? Right, well, true. because right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. either way, yeah. For good because or bad. <laughs> we are always manifesting, right? We're either right. manifesting what we want or we're manifesting what we don't want or somewhere in between. So <laughs> yes, um, I would definitely say that, that I manifested, um, uh, being a number one bestseller, but you're probably going to ask me like, Oh, how I went about it or something along <laughs> that line. <laughs> right. <laughs> did you, did you manifest it intentionally? That's what <laughs> I and most, <laughs> yeah, no, I most definitely did. So it's interesting because I never even thought of myself as, a, as an author and speaking of focus, I mean, that is something that before I ever thought about writing a book, I honestly, I just didn't think I had had it in me to really, um, to, to really, uh, dedicate myself and commit myself, uh, to, to what it would take to, uh, to, to write a whole book. I mean, that is some serious completion there. I mean, you could, yeah. you can write a book, you can write a 20 page book and you can sure. get that done. 
Um, but it really started off with, you know, I, as, as we all know, I mean, um, I started off as a hypnotist and, you know, writing, um, all of, I, you know, I wrote a lot of, uh, hypnosis scripts, <laughs> which mm-hmm. I recorded. And so I, I knew I had some creative writing ability, uh, within me and, uh, you know, and so after, after quite a while of having these, uh, these hypnosis recordings, a lot of the, the recordings that I had really had this law of attraction verbiage in them. You know, Mm -hmm. I would talk about, and I think this is one of the reasons why my sessions were so powerful and why people were getting such great results with them and why they just really love my sessions over a lot of others, because, um, I was really talking about how, how we manifest things within the the sessions uh, themselves. I was talking about how, you know, feel yourself, you know, feeling the vibration of this coming to you and, and turn that up and, you know, feel the energy. And, and so I, I just had all of that law of attraction conversation, sort of my little secret (laughs) sauce Mm -hmm. for making my, uh, my law of attraction or my hypnosis sessions uh, work better because they were very law of attraction based. And um, then the secret came out um, in 2006 and that really allowed that below the surface conversation that I was having to come to above the surface. I actually did start like, Ooh, I can actually talk about this. I can actually create recordings and and call them (laughs) raise your vibration Mm. law of attraction. And people would actually know what I'm talking about, um, on the surface. And so I really started bringing this conversation to the forefront and, um, and I don't know, people started like kind of noticing that I was talking about this and, and then I was asked to give a two day presentation on law of attraction. And I thought, huh, you know, I don't really have a curriculum on exactly like I, I talk about this all the time, but I didn't have any structured way of like, how am I going to present a two day conference on this? Uh, when I don't really have like a, a set curriculum, I just like giving little tips and techniques and little clues here on, mm-hmm. on how it works. So I had to like really think about how was I going to present this two day presentation? And so I thought, well, maybe this is, and, and before I did that, um, a a dear client of mine, uh, kept telling me, you should write a book. You should write a book. I'm like, I don't have time for that. I don't, I don't have time to sit down. I've got too many projects. I mean, that's usually my answer to everything because I am always like, I've got a, about a half a dozen projects that I'm usually in the middle of between getting ready for a presentation or my app or my website or a funnel or whatever. Anyway, so that was my answer, but it all just kind of came together. It was almost like it was really destined to be because people were telling me you should write this book. I was being asked to do this, um, law of attraction presentation. And so, um, I said, you know what, maybe it is time to go ahead and, and write that book. And so that's when I just, I started really thinking to myself like, well, and, and just really, um, reverse engineering how, what, what have been the the things that I have used to manifest, for example, my soulmate or manifest being able to run a marathon or manifest this fearless kitty 5k that I put together or manifest, um, you know, my business and, and all of those things. And so I just really, uh, I just reversed and reverse engineered and really thought about, and I initially I had like, cause we talk about the eight manifesting conditions, in my book, I actually had 10 manifesting conditions when I first, when I first started writing this book, but, uh, the, like they were a little, some of them were a little bit overlapped, like feeling and vibration. So I just meshed those two together. And uh, I think another two, oh, expectation and belief. 
were two separate uh, conditions. So I just sort of meshed those two together. But anyway, I'm getting way, I could talk about my book all day long. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I'm curious because you, you said that you were asked to do a presentation, then you decided to write a book. So how long, I mean, how long did it take you? Yeah. So the, you know, so the presentation, you know, a lot of times um, you get asked for, to do these things about almost a year in advance. And so it, I had about to get, to get both things accomplished. I had almost a year to get that mm. done. So it took me probably about nine months uh, to, mm. uh, to write the book and you know, what really ended up happening. So there's another law of attraction author out there whom I manifested some help from, <laughs> um, because I had him on my, on my podcast, it was Michael Lozier. And he wrote the book that came out even before the secret called law of attraction. Now mine's practical law of attraction, but his is law of attraction. It's either the law of attraction or law of attraction. One of the two. Anyway, he was a pretty well-known author. And so I had him on my show and I told him that I was writing this book and I had kind of, you know, mentioned that I was, um, you know, I was just a little bit is going a little slower than I had hoped. So he really opened this whole floodgate of information for me and really helped me to structure it in such a way, like he just kind of gave me all of these tips that helped me to write it that much faster. And he really just simplified the whole process for me. So I really feel like, you know, he came along at just the right, right time at the right moment, exactly right in the moment that I wrote this book and all the tips and tools and techniques that he shared with me just from an author standpoint, it was just like, oh, it, it just came together. And so it was just, it was so much easier um, once I got a little bit of help on, um, on that structure. Hmm, nice. Uh, you know that, and that just reminds me of, uh, we talked about, I think it was the last episode, you know, be pleasant and <laughs> surround yourself with, with, you know, good people and be a good person. You know what? That's so true. It's so true. I have a a very quick aside story on that. Um, We'll get right back into the authoring stuff. Um, The uh, number one bestselling author manifesting that. But here's another thing that I told you earlier that I'm renaming my app. And so I've been Mm -hmm. kind of going through this process lately of figuring out the right name that also has, I know exactly what I want the name is. It's just been, you know, are we going to misspell the name? Because this is a kind of name that would not be available right now on a, just, you know, this.com. Everything's taken. (laughs) Right. Everything's taken. I mean, like literally like if to get this name, I pay, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars if it was even available. And so, um, so I'm really having to, um, stretch of course there goes the garage door my husband's leaving to go grocery shopping (laughs) um so anyway i've been working uh, with a couple of misspellings and i reached out to somebody who was a domain owner and he came back to me um and he he said well what would you offer and i i gave him kind of a lowball amount that i said i would pay for it because honestly i'm not sure if i even want that domain if it's you know and there, there are plenty of other options if I'm going to choose to go that misspelling route. Anyway, so uh, I gave him the, and he comes back and he was super rude to me, just super, super rude to me about, about that. And I said, listen, you know, I, I'm a hypnotist. I'm not a mind reader. Like, I don't know, you know, how to do like, I, it's not, this is not my business of just buying domains. And I'm like, so, you know, you didn't really need to be rude and, right. um, so anyway, so then he, he got back to me for whatever reason, like that could have been the end of it. And we went back and forth a little bit. And then it turns out like a friend of his had died, uh, the day before. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but I, every, you know, everything that I had said to him, I was just like, I, I did actually get back to him. I'm like, I really apologize. So it was the, that the fact that I said, I'm sorry, I said, I, 
you know, I'm sorry that you feel that I wasted your time. It really wasn't my intention. Um, I'm new at this. I don't really, you know, know um, exactly how to approach somebody to buy their domain. And so he gets back to me. He's like, that's okay. And then he offers me a really, really fair price. And so it, it just really goes to show that like, if you take the high road and, Mm -hmm. and actually, even if it's not necessarily your fault, you didn't deserve for them to treat you badly, just apologizing actually, Mm -hmm. um, puts you a little bit more in control because it, it almost like you're taking ownership over the situation. You're saying, you know what? something within me, I manifested this. Mm -hmm. And so if you say, if you really own that, you manifest everything, and then you apologize for it, you get so much more back because you're really taking ownership over that. You create everything in your life just by saying that. And so it was, it was a really good little let, you know, a little turning point, a little lesson for me. And I, I've, you know, we, we can easily get our, our egos in the way um, and not apologize for things, but I think there's so much more available to you when you actually just own it and apologize for it. Even if it's not like your fault, you have, but it, you realize it's your creation. Mm-hmm. Wow. You, that's good for you. I'm not sure I would have handled it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so good for you for doing that. Um, you know, and it's, I'm reminded of Dale Carnegie's book, you know, he talks about that. Just, just apologize. You know, it doesn't cost you anything really. Yeah. So yeah, big, what's the big deal? Yeah. Right. Just apologize. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, you know, it, it like really wasn't my, I didn't do anything wrong. It was my fault, but, it, but I, I created it and I, you know, and it gave me so much power because he came back and ultimately kind of gave me what I wanted. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you, um, so you get the help from, from Michael. I mean, what kind of, what were kind of the steps that you took then to actually make it a reality, make it a bestseller? So it was, it was really interesting. So one of the things that he helped me with is he helped me to actually, uh, he, he helped me to actually structure the book and, you know, like I, I could get really into the weeds on this. So I'm really trying to avoid getting into the, the, the main weeds, but he, he really helped me like a lot of, when we're writing a book for, for one, um, you know, the, the book is going to be about a six by nine book. It's, it's, you know, the, the size of the book is usually about six by nine. And so that was like, really the first thing is I put the book into the actual layout that it was going to be. And then the other thing too, is like every, um, you know, there's the book's going to be divided out into sections and then the sections are going to be further divided down into chapters. And so I, um, you know, there's going to be like a lot of blank pages. So when you actually lay out the book and you put, okay, these are all the sections and these are all the chapters, you realize like, wow, I've written about a quarter of the book already without actually writing anything. And then, uh, you know, so once I got it into that format, one of the things that I did is I started actually thinking about some of the endorsements that I uh, would see because there was a, there was an area at the, in the beginning of the book for your endorsements. And so I started thinking about like, well, who would be qualified to endorse a book such as Practical Law of Attraction? Like who would really be beneficial? And so I started thinking about a lot of the teachers from The Secret, whom Mm -hmm. some of them I had had some interaction with in the past, and some of them I had never interacted with in the past. And so I started um, kind of a little bit of a visualization process. I wrote their names in the beginning of the book under these little blurbs in the beginning. And I I started actually thinking of myself, asking them and how I would ask them, how I would approach them. So it really kind of started off with, um, you know, I got, uh, Oh, you know, like I started off with like some, some people that I knew the most that I was most comfortable asking. I asked Richard Nongard, you know, and then he said, yes. And then I asked Steve G Jones and, and, you know, he's a little bit, you know, more well-known and he said, yes. And so it was like, I started building up my confidence. So then I asked Bob Doyle who I, you know, um, and it was so funny 
because when I reached out to Bob, we had this real crazy synchronicity. It was like, I was wondering when you were going to contact me. <laughs> like he had actually <laughs> been thinking about me and like, so somehow we manifested that situation together. Wow. And he, so wow. he, he wrote a blurb for my book. Um, but the one that really kind of blew my mind that came after that was Joe Vitale. Cause I'd never ha had, too. yeah, <laughs> I like, never whoa. had any <laughs> uh, interaction with him ever. And so I, so when I got Bob Doyle, it just, again, it kind of gave me a little bit more confidence. And I remember telling my husband, uh, we're cooking dinner, we're in the kitchen. And, um, and I said, yeah, I got, I got Bob Doyle. And I said, and next week I'm going to get Joe Vitale. And I mm -hmm. had no, I had no, um, experience of him or no, you know, ever. And so I said, I was going to get him. Now I would never seen him go on Facebook live ever. Um, and, but I had been following him and all of a sudden he, he's on Facebook live and, and I, I get the little notification. It says Joe Vitale's live. And so I go and I join his live and during his live, you know, I made a comment. I'm like, I want to, I want to get you to, um, endorse my book. And so he gave, he <laughs> said, he gave me the information on how to get in touch with them. And so I, um, I gave, I got in touch with them and I gave him, you know, uh, and, and I, and he like literally within 24 hours, um, uh, after like, uh, seeing a little, um, insert, you know, from my insert is that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> excerpt, excerpt from my book within 24 hours, he turned that blurb around uh, to me. And so I got, wow. I got him. And so it was just like, when I realized like I could really manifest right. these, yeah. uh, these endorsements, then when I was writing my book, I just knew, I just said, you know what, I'm not just writing any ordinary book. I mm -hmm. am writing a number one best selling book. I am going to hit the number one best seller list on Amazon for, and when, you know, I want to put that in quotes because, you know, number one is relative to the category. I don't, when I say number one, best selling book, you're able to say that you're number one, best selling book, as long as you've hit number one in a category, but it's still like a huge accomplishment. I mean, not everybody uh, hits number one in, in their category. Um, I'm even having right now, a little bit of a difficult time getting back up there again. I held that position for about two years. <laughs> um, you know, so it's, you know, it's, it's, I haven't been focused on it as much, you know, I guess, you know, part of it is just, I've been focused on other things. If I focus on that again, you better believe it'll be number one bestseller again. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I remember when I opened up the book and I was like, wow, these are some these are some famous people that, <laughs> that blurbs is amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to, I want to tell you something too. So I know there's probably, we, I know we have a lot of hypnotists that, that, that watch this and um, what you talked about was kind of the organization of it. I got to tell you, you know, I know you had help from Michael. Um, I took Richard Nongard's class and the way he, he has it all structured out. Once you get the structure down, it becomes so much easier. You know, it's just so much easier. Really. Yeah. It, it really, it, it helps you to organize it. And, you know, and the other thing too, is that I also put, because I was looking at, you know, he, he said, you know, use my book as a little bit of a, a context, you know, just for this, for the, the structure. And so one of the things that I did too, is I created these characters, um, mm -hmm. Emma, the entrepreneur and uh, soulmate seeking Sam, just mm -hmm. to give people some uh, ideas and examples on when I introduce a technique or a tool, um, to, to show how they do it. And of course these, mm -hmm. these two people are my target audience. And so, uh, that would, that kind of really helps give an example for anybody who's an entrepreneur. Well, how, how does, you know, and, and Emma is a coach. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, she has a, she's a life coach. And so I gave, I, I created these, these characters. I had my designer actually design them. And so mm -hmm. it gives, what it does though, is it speaks to 
all three languages. Cause you know, uh, Michael is also, you know, a uh, NLP practitioner. And so he kind of talked about the whole an NLP aspect of things, talking to the different learning styles. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so seeing the pictures, you know, people that are visual, um, they love to see pictures mm -hmm. and, um, of course words are already there. So it's already going to speak to the auditory person, but then I also sprinkled in some, uh, you know, like the, the, the exercises. And so mm -hmm. having people do the exercises, that's going to help the, the doers, the, the kinesthetic people. So that was just another really interesting tip that he gave to me is to speak to all three learning styles. And I mean, when you have these illustrations in the book, well, that's just another thing that, you know, takes, takes up a few more pages. And my goal was to, to have a 160 page book. Um, so it actually ended up being much, much longer than that. It was like 269 pages. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I really found myself, uh, having to delete more than oh. I was, um, having to write because it's like, once you've, you know, once you have that structure, just everything seems to fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take to, to become number one? Uh, After a few launched. hours, a few hours, a few, like wait, hours, hours, so you, you, you upload it in hours. It's, it's number one. Yeah. So, wow. you know, of course that was all, um, Amazing. that was all by design. You know, I, uh -huh. I manifested a, a launch team. Well, the other thing too, that was really, uh, during the process of writing this book, I was invited to a launch team for another book. And I was actually one of the 30 writer, uh, 30 mm. contributors to this other book, this uh, book mm. on entrepreneurial, um, stories. And so I, I think that was really helpful and instrumental for me because I got to have an experience already before my book launched, I got to experience. So it was almost like the, the whole manifesting was manifesting the information, manifesting the helpful people and, and, you know, not so the, so when you manifest, it's not just you manifest the end product, the end result. There's a lot of little things that you manifest in, in along the way. And so you have to like, you really got to get into the mindset of saying yes a lot. Mm -hmm. And because when you, uh, when you're in this process, you never know why you're being asked to do certain things. And so being on this little launch team, I got to see behind the scenes, how, how do you, how do you do this? Like, how does a book become number one bestseller? It's not by accident. I mean, it is something that you do have to really pre-plan for. So getting onto this launch team and seeing what actually happens, I was able to really just replicate that exact process. And mm -hmm. since I'd already been a number one bestseller on a book with 30 other entrepreneurs. It wasn't my own book, but I had already yeah. had the experience of for a day, you know, being on the number one bestselling list of this other book. So I got, I, I, you know, it was like, I had proof already that like, okay, if I just do this, then this is going to work. And, um, so like I was saying, you know, it's like, once you start manifesting, you just start being directed to all the ideas that you, that you need. And, um, and the other thing too, there were just some other lessons that I learned along the way. Um, I, I came across some videos with some more helpful information that told me exactly what I needed to do. So I knew, mm -hmm. I knew exactly how to calculate how many books I needed to sell in the, in these different categories to make me number one bestseller. So I just needed to manifest that number of sales and it, and it, so then it really just kind of came, came down to that. Um, what I didn't know, cause I really thought that everything else just took me by surprise because 
I, I was only con- concerned about just getting that badge and being and holding it for a couple of hours. Right. Uh-huh. right yeah. <laughs> I, I held it for far longer than a couple of hours. I held that bestseller list for two years. And wow. on top of that, I didn't know that, um, that would also kind of lead to being a significant part of, um, of my income stream. So Mm. that was another bonus that I just, I wasn't even expecting. I just thought I was going to be a hypnotist who has her own book. And that was just going to give me credibility and being number one bestseller was going to give me credibility, but all the other things, like I didn't know that people were going to give me such high praise for the, for the book. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I really expected the book to be maybe a three-star average book. And mm-hmm. I was, I was fine with that. And now these days, if I get a two or three star, I, it hurts my, fi- my feelings because <laughs> 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 I'm so used to getting, you know, five, five-star reviews on right. it now. So that all, th- there were just all these unexpected bonuses that I got that I wasn't even really anticipating, but I think it was just because I had so much positive energy into it. And heck, I mean, you know, here's the thing I had to become a number one best seller on a book about manifesting. I mean, Mm -hmm. like, how could I not? (laughs) Right. How could you not? How could I not? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you know, really, Real quick, I'm just I'm, I'm just wondering um, because I remembered last year at Hypno Thoughts you actually taught a class on how to how to do a bestseller, how to release. I a did. Bestseller yeah, it was a four hour class. Yeah. Yeah. Are you doing that again this year? I am not. I did it two times in a row, and oh. and it's it's you know I I like to change things up. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, yeah, so I, I am writing, I am, I am doing a, uh, a couple of other classes at uh, Hypno Thoughts. I'm doing on, um, oh, NLP techniques for manifesting, mm. uh, which is super fun. And then uh, navigating in the virtual world. So that's going to talk about, you know, really the whole the whole thing. Uh, this is a four hour class. And it's going to be, uh, talking about, you know, just like everything, like creating digital products, creating, um, digital, uh, you know, experiences for people, webinars, events, and cool. hiring virtual assistants and, you know, just the whole virtual world. Awesome. Awesome. So what else, what else do we, I need to do <laughs> for this book? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think one of the the key key things when it really really comes down to it is when it comes to manifesting anything, the key is that you have to you really really do have to believe it. And Forget you know, it. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> done. <laughs> you really okay, do. Believe it. Sorry, yeah, yes, okay. you have to believe it. <laughs> But more, more important, you know, like more important than that is you, you also need to feel it. You need to feel it's like, you've got to embody, um, you have to have the identity. Like you've got, just got to like, see yourself and, and, and feel yourself as that number one bestseller, because the, when you feel that way, that's going to also give you. I feel like it's going to give you, cause it's a really well-written book. And so you want it, it it's not just like, it's just not, not just a pretty picture that, you know, somebody is going to buy. It's not just about the best-selling status, but you, you want to write a book that is worthy of that. And so you have to become that you have to become the author that is writing a best-selling book. And that's what I always you know, as, as I was writing this, I would see myself as this famous author who's writing a bestseller, just writing another bestselling book as if I'd already done this before. And, you know, and, and the other thing too, is I was writing about something that I really, really feel passionate about. And it's something that I know that I can really help people with. Um, and, um, you know, and, most, you know, most things that I've had luck manifesting were, were things that I just kind of, um, thought about like on the spur of the moment. And so this book, it was one of those things It just kind of came about 
on the spur of the moment. And, you know, while it only took me nine months to write, you know, sometimes people take years to write a book, but I was writing about something that I've been doing for the last 20 years. So it was just really a matter of organizing the information and just getting it out on paper. I mean, I could have done it in three weeks if I had focused on it long enough. It was just a matter of really articulating what I already knew, um, you know, already knew, uh, was, um, uh, you know, was within me. So, you know, you want to act quickly and you want to really act decisively on that. Can I just interject something really quick? I really like what you said about, um, uh, going back a couple things there was, uh, you said to actually create a good book, you know, yes. don't just, you know, instead of just, I, I see so much, I see this left out so often when I'm watching videos and stuff, but that people are talking about manifesting millions of dollars in houses and all these things, but, but, but actually, you're know, talking about actually creating something that's going to help other people. That's going to be a good thing. And so you're deserving of that success that you get because of that really. You know, that is so true. And I just, I, I do see a lot of, and I've fallen for a lot of these, um, you know, books, uh, or courses or, um, just things that are like super, super cheap or, or maybe even you spend some money on it, but you know, you can tell like the intention is, is not really there. They're just in it to make a buck. And I cannot do that. Like it's, I wouldn't yeah. want to, but I, I care so much about people's results. I mean, I just want to take, you know, whatever I am thinking about and saying and know that works. And I just want to infuse that into, you know, it just transfer that into somebody's mind. And like that happens for me, like whenever I'm writing a hypnosis script or I'm re reading it and recording it, I'm really picturing that person like, how are they going to take this and, and apply it and, and, and get those results and get that success in their life? Like I really, really down deep inside, I, I take ownership. It's like, I just take ownership. I like, I really think about how am I going to make sure that this really happens for, for that person? So I care. And I think that you're so right on. I mean, you do, you're, you know, if you write something uh, that you really back up and you really care about, it's, it's just going to come through when, when somebody reads that. And um, even though I may not necessarily have the power to change every single person or make everyone do it exactly the way I have articulated it, I really feel like um, I just, I just like, I own it. I just own that um, the person who picks up and reads this book, their life has to change. Otherwise I haven't done my job. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I sort of cut you off there. We, you, you were in the middle of, of, uh, of kind of telling us what else we can do. Um, and anything else that we. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just, I really believe that you, again, it's like, if you've been thinking about writing a book, don't hold back. Don't, you know, like, like just do it. Like I, I, I hear people all the time saying, I'm going to write a book someday. I'm going to write, I'm just going to do this right. someday. <laughs> and if you're even thinking that you have something important to share with the world and, you know, just go with it and the universe will help back you up because the universe likes speed. It doesn't like you hemming and hawing about things and being indecisive and not making that decision. You need to decide now and, and just make a quick decision and do it. Like what is really the worst that could happen? You know, the yeah. worst that could happen is that maybe you won't make the number one bestseller list. Maybe you will get a few um, uh, bad reviews, but I always thought like, if I got the bad reviews, I would just always look at that as feedback. Like I would just, you have to put it out there, just get it out there and do your very best. You, you know, if you do your very best and you really want people to succeed, then the universe will help you 
to push that message out in the best possible way. And as you're as you're doing this and as you're really um, acting decisively, it just raises your vibration. It just gets you to into a much higher place, um, you know, and, and it builds confidence and, and, you know, and, and all of that. So, you know, those are, those are my main, you know, my main tips is just get going, (laughs) act quickly, decisively, and with passion. Yeah. I really feel like too, if you, cause I, cause I work with a lot of, of like new hypnotists and, and ones that want to be hypnotists and things like that. And I always tell them like, look, if you think that you can help people and you're not doing it, then you're really doing a disservice to the world. You know, it, you um, know what? It's really true. It's yeah, really if you've got true. got the skills, if you've got some knowledge, um, you kind of owe it to the world. I mean, you, you got that information for a reason. So anyway. it's, it's actually, and I heard this put, um, and I'm not going to be able to articulate it exactly, you know, the right way, but it's, it's actually selfish. It's yeah, actually it selfish because you're really only thinking when you don't, when you hold yourself back, you're really just thinking about yourself. You're not thinking exactly. about yeah. how, you know, I mean, we all have, we're all like a little further along in something that, right somebody else could benefit from knowing that is inside of you. So, you know, like, just get over yourself. <laughs> yeah, don't be selfish. <laughs> don't be selfish. <laughs> so, you know, I was um, fortunate enough to be at HypnoThoughts, was able to buy a book directly from the author, but how can everybody else get the book? Yeah. So um, it's on Amazon. That's really, I, I sell it exclusively on uh, Amazon, the, uh, the hard, you know, the hard co- cover, the paperback. And so you can get a copy on Amazon and um, you can also get, you can either get the Kindle. It's, it's some people, if you have the Kindle and unlimited, um, which you don't have to have a actual Kindle reading device. Right. I mean, like mm-hmm. if you have a, if you have an iPhone or iPad or an Android or whatever, um, there's a Kindle app. So you can, uh, and if you have the Kindle unlimited service, it's actually free. <laughs> wow. Free. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> Love it. it Manifest some free. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, I pay for my own. Uh, I, I don't know if you're a member of the Kindle un- unlimited, but it's like 10 bucks yeah. a month. And it's yeah, a membership. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you can, you know, and any of the authors that opt into that, which I'm one of them and many, many mm-hmm. other amazing, amazing authors. And, you know, we get paid um, by the page read. So mm-hmm. when you do get your Kindle unlimited version of that, just read it, <laughs> read it, read oh, it over and over page. again, because we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> we get paid by, by the page you read. <laughs> uh, so all, those, all those ones that you're downloading, but not yeah, actually reading. Like a penny cats. or something like that. I mean, <laughs> right. like it, <laughs> you have to have a lot of people reading it, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can these other poor saps that weren't at HypnoThoughts last year, how can they get a signed copy of the book? Oh, well, that's really easy. Come to the Law of Attraction Intensive in Las Vegas, and Mm -hmm. you'll not only get a signed copy of my book, but you're going to take your whole life and your manifesting skills to a whole new level. Because, you know, I, I actually have people do some of the exercises from the book um, that, you know, when people buy this book, they just like anybody else, you buy a book, it's got a lot of exercises in it. If you actually do the exercises, it Mm. will change your life. Right. But how many of us actually go through that book and sit down and take the time to actually do that? So we will be going through a lot of those exercises in the book, but in the last since three years ago, when I wrote that book, I've come up with a whole new set of uh, manifesting techniques and meditations and visualizations and really, really cool things that we go even beyond the book. And, uh, and there, it's just really super, super fun and life-changing. So definitely come to uh, the law of attraction intensive in Las Vegas get a signed copy of my book, get a hug from me and <laughs> free hugs. <laughs> is, there a li- is there a link people can follow for that? 
Sunday. Yes. Yes. So that you can go to law of attraction intensive dot com and you will find out more about how to sign up and register for that class uh, we're still doing it at the early bird price right now and so um, that'll expire before too long but that is that class is july 26 through 28 so it's three full days with me of immersing yourself in to this whole manifesting process and you know i gotta tell you uh guys it's really about immersing yourself and in three days you're going to come away a whole new person somebody who is empowered confident has the belief it's already manifested stuff um it's a great time it's a lot of fun and so i encourage you to get the book or come to the class or do both. Nice. And of course, download the HypnoCloud app. The HypnoCloud app. And that will also, that's just another way. I love changing people's lives and giving people all these different modalities and techniques and ways to do that. So definitely the app, um, you know, just do it all. Just immerse yourself oh. into the whole Victoria Gallagher experience. Do, you know, get my book, get my app, come to my class and your life will change damn right for the better uh, oh oh my goodness, i said the d word oh that was okay anyway <laughs> <laughs> all right hey everybody if you um and also if you want to get if you want to watch some funny hypnosis i've just put up a couple of new funny skits uh, from my show so head over to my youtube channel youtube.com slash jim kellner pretty funny stuff oh yes there. definitely i'm gonna do that i actually watched one of one of your videos the other day on facebook that you had posted and so that was uh that's you are hilarious i can't wait to see you in person <laughs> awesome thanks so much hey everybody thanks so much for uh listening and watching to the power of the mind podcast thank you victoria for having me as your co-host once again well thank you for having be, for you being my co-host and <laughs> thank you <laughs> listeners for listening to the power of your mind podcast uh, be sure to uh, send send me an email orders i have talk.com go to my other website victoria m um you can get yourself a a free 15 minute discovery call too to kind of get to know yourself a little bit more and discover if coaching is right for you, there's just all kinds of things there for you. So thank you so much for listening and we will see you next week.